Chugs? Chug a look. Welcome to another sensual moment. Sensual. Sensual. Ooh. Sensual. Hey, what's something weird that you do that you might think it's weird to other people? Uh, I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> oh, okay. I. I mean, when if you it's a- personal, then I don't mean, tell you, me. If it. you ask me, the fir- the first thing I wanted to do was make a joke and say uh, when I touch myself at night. Oh my goodness! I uh, think other people do that, but then immediately I was like, "For sure, I do that." What is a what is a real <laughs> answer? And I don't know. I, I'd so, have to think. Of, uh, I, I'm so thrown off by the question. I'd have to think about. That's it. fine. I I thought about it today that I, I and I, I this does kind of relate to to wrestling. It it gives a kind of a visual aspect maybe not think about me naked but in the shower i meditate and i just sit i just do like alistair black malachi black just sit down and just let the water hit me well you sit think. cross-legged in the shower yeah how I just sit down it not comfortably okay i mean not crazy comfortably but like it definitely like like the knees are upward uh, okay that makes where, sense. like it that makes fits sense, to the point where i'm not uncomfortable like i'm not like gotcha losing. gotcha but I realize I'm like that's kind of weird. I feel like, like so, sometimes when I'm in the shower and I have time, like when I'm not going to work, like if it's on the weekend, mm-hmm. I'd be like, I'll just sit down for a little bit and just think. I would, I mean, being put on the spot and not having a ton of time to think about it. The one of the first things that comes to mind would be that I sit on my feet a lot. What do you mean you sit on your feet? Like if you look at me right now, I'm not sitting normally. You're sitting on your feet. I'm literally my foot is oh, on I would my, hate that. my tush. I would hate that. Um, I regularly sit. I would absolutely hate that. Um, on my feet. I would feel uncomfortable because I feel like I have a th- weird thing about my feet where like, uh, like I don't sit norm. Like sitting normally is, for extended periods of time, is uncomfortable for me. Okay. Well, like a lot of my family members have like l- that leaky, sh- shaky leg syndrome. Yeah, well, like you'll see me like doing like my one leg a lot. Mm-hmm. Like that might be one of the reasons that I, because I definitely do that too. That might be one of the reasons I don't sit normally. But if I feel like my feet are like trapped somewhere, mm-hmm. I feel weird. Oh, like no, nah, I regularly sit like this. Like if my if my feet are like cold or hot, if like I'll have this weird like antsy feeling and have to take my socks off and i hate ha- like i hate having socks off i i like wearing socks all the interesting time. but yeah i thought about that because if i can sit in the shower and make me feel like i'm somewhere else i think i've done it correctly because like it's just the water concept because water is so relaxing to me like I- i'll i'll put it on youtube like if i'm not doing like lo-fi i'll just put water on like and raining, you don't raining. like pools well, because it's not falling. It's really the sound. Uh, okay. It's the sound of of rain. So so I will second that because when I want to when I want to get in the zone with writing, mm-hmm. um, I've found that the best background noise for me is like rain. Yeah. Like a light rain drizzle. It like helps me stay focused in the zone of writing as opposed to like if there's silence, I can become distracted significantly easier. And if it's like regular music, like with it, if there's if it's music with lyrics, then I start to sing, and that messes me up. Yeah. So I, well, I get it. Like today, I, I I got to literally like maybe a October or November forest, and I was just there, and I was sitting. And then as soon as I got chills, I'm like, okay, we did it. Because that's what that's when I like when I can feel like I'm actually in when I feel like I'm fully in. Mm-hmm. There's times where I'll come out of it and go right. I'm in the shower. I forgot. Like I do that a lot. Where like interesting. I can zone out and be somewhere else in my head, and my my brain will just make up this fit like this area, but nothing happens that gets me distracted. Where like it pulls me away. Because mm-hmm. I heard who was it? Rain Wilson. Dwight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said meditation is all about thinking of nothing and as soon as something comes in your head pushing that back out and i'm like i can't do that because i need something because a white let's just say a white in my mind if i just visualize a white nothingness i can't do that Mm -hmm. i need some kind of like atmosphere of like something calming and then i'll be like be able to just be like 
Don't think of anything else but this area and live in this moment right now where you're at. It's really fucking weird, but I, I find myself to be like, I feel like that's a weird thing that no one else does. I'm sure there's absolutely people who do it. Uh, maybe not the like sitting cross-legged in the shower portion of it, Yeah, but the rest of it, absolutely. People meditate, not always naked in the shower. Just not always <laughs> naked in the shower. Uh, I, I think the weird part, and, and, and I have no doubt that there's a lot of people who meditate in the shower. I think the weird part of it that probably not a lot of people do is the sitting cross-legged part. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's easier for me because I feel like if I zone out, I might fall over. To, <laughs> like I might lose my footing. <laughs> uh, to, to, to track back to make a joke that yeah. I've been holding on to Go for ahead. a couple minutes. Uh, Touch yourself at night. You, yeah. Uh, you said that um, you sit in the sh- you were in the shower and you were thinking of like an October, November uh, Lake Forest. Lake Forest. Yeah. And then you started getting chills and you were like, I made it or whatever. And in my head, I was like, you know, it'd be funny. If he got chills, if he actually got chills because uh, somebody was downstairs and turned the hot water yeah. on the sink, and so That's you got chills too. because it was cold water. I can feel my I can feel my body change <laughs> as if I can I can imagine how the world is or how the atmosphere is in my head, mm-hmm. and have hot water being hit on me, but still feel like I am in a cool environment. Like I can I, I, in my head, like today especially, I could visualize an outside body of like looking at me and having my breath like you could see my breath and it was just raining in this just like kind of not not like wintry forest but a forest that was just like just trees for miles just trees for anyway i just thought that was a weird thing to to, to talk about i thought that was a strange thing mm. on a on a lighter note uh finn balor says that if cm punk comes to wwe he said he'll fight him. He doesn't really care who he fights. He'll fight a broom as long as it costs. As long as someone gives him money. Yeah, <laughs> which is real nice. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a podcast all about wrestling. In this corner, an author and a black belt, Kibbles. Kibbles. What kind of name is that? Cookie the Wolf is the best. Ooh. I forgot my copies. And in this corner. Pookie the Wolf! Pookie the Wolf is one of the best! Welcome to the Kibbles and Pookies Squared Circle. Well, um, as long as he's doing that, it for the right reasons, yeah, you know? Yeah, that CM Punk character. I have no doubt that there are a lot of people in both camps that are happy to see him go. There are people in both camps who are sad to see him go. There's definitely people who want him to come into WWE, definitely people who don't. Um, well, can I ask, do you think do you think he would come to WWE? Is it a possibility? And if so, what's the percentage? Uh, I would say it's a possibility, yes, absolutely. Um, because at this point, um, it's difficult to say that something is like a 100% not possible. Uh, so I would say it's definitely a possibility. I would say if we were to give, if if you were to ask me to give a percentage of likelihood of him coming to WWE, mm-hmm. I would say it's probably low. It's probably like twenty percent. That's exactly the same number I was going to say. Because, um, so looking at it from two perspectives, right? It would be. So here's the reason why I think it's low. I think it's low because WWE is a publicly traded company, and that. Um, they would have to take into consideration the reason why he's being the reason why he's being fired by AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's that. Like I think from a from a PR like from yeah. a legal perspective, he's a PR it's, nightmare. Yeah, at least right now. Um, I mean he's always really been kind of yeah, and, and so. So it's kind of I, I just think that that would pro that would be the main driving force as to why he would not come to WWE is just because Vince Triple H whatever like even if they wanted to even if they wanted to put their personal feelings aside and um you know uh, make good and bring him back for the for the money um to get that you know to get higher ratings to get money all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it would certainly, um, the, the PR and legal aspect of it would certainly probably be the biggest deterring factor. And we've seen Vince, um, 
you know, swallow his pride. Now he hasn't done it with everybody, but we've seen we've seen Vince swallow his pride on numerous occasions and like bring people back, um, or bring people in in general to uh, for to make money. Who comes to mind? Um, you know, I would think uh, Bret Hart. Okay, I was uh, going to say that's the first person. Came Bret, Bret Hart's one. Um, I mean, as much as there probably was less animosity around each other as opposed to the Bret Hart, Eric Bischoff, like, yeah, he legit that's tried to put one. him at, like, that wasn't even like, I have a personal vendetta with you. It was like, I'm going to call you out on my show. Yeah. I'm going to, le- I'm going to steal talent from you. I'm going to legitimately try to put you out of business. Disgrace your belts. Yeah. So like, I mean, Eric Bischoff is a pretty big one. Um, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of who else, Bret Hart, um, I mean, Bret Hart's a big enough one that, the, that I get the example. Yeah, uh, Ultimate Warrior was definitely one. I mean, he held him up yeah. for money, and then he still brought him back later. That all ended kind of poorly. Uh, I mean, they also they all ultimately brought him back twice. Like, Hogan's somebody I think. Hogan vi- definitely Vince McMahon and him are, are are very not like at at the best of relationship. Yeah, There's so a it's, lot of people I think that's out there that I mean, I'm sure. Might maybe not now, but Stone Cold could be the whole going taking. True, going Stone Cold home. walking walking away, and then he, you know, made made a deal worked worked out a deal with them. I mean, there have been a number of people that, you know, um, Vince has, for lack of a better term, swallowed his pride and said, "This is what's yeah. best for business." Also, there's like the whole like growing and maturing as you get older type thing, right? Like, you have a big blow up with somebody, and that doesn't mean that it ends like forever. Like there are numerous examples all over the world of people who have some type of big blow up, whether personal or professional. And then, you know, 10 years later or whatever, they, you know, they make up and, you know, I mean, they, 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 because they're not in the situation, they're kind of like, I understand like you, you were doing what you thought was best for you. And I was doing what I thought was best for me. And those things yeah. didn't linked up. And even though I, don't I still don't agree with you? Like I'm not going to hold it over your head anymore. Yeah, I think. Well, even, even friendship. Like I have friendships and relationships that are like that, where I don't need to necessarily have a relationship with an ex or an old friend, but I still am like, no, these people are are enjoyable to have around, and it's a shame that we had a falling out, and I'd like to get back to where we were. Yeah. So it's definitely is it's definitely a possibility. I think um, the PR issue. I, I, you know, I, I think the PR issue and the, I shouldn't say PR, the le, the lega, legal Le-legality. issue, legality legality of everything is probably, would be the main detractor. Like, I mean, we're talking about several examples of physical altercations with uh, numerous, like it's not even like physical altercations with the same people. It's like physical altercations yeah. with numerous different parties. That's the point. thing too. Like there was nothing, I don't remember there being a WWE situation where, he got in anyone like physical physical right Mm -hmm. it was like him just being like oh well i think you're wrong and i i'm better than that and right now in terms of and and and, you know and things are different i mean the physical altercation and issue with jack perry was probably more uh cm punk motivated in terms of it becoming physical um you know i would i would still track back and say that uh in terms of the brawl out in the elite situation, uh, you know, I would still say that it's still more the elite's fault that it became physical. Yeah, yeah. Like if they it's had let that Punk it got, pull off, it's weird that it got to that. It's weird that it got to that level. Um, but I would still. Now I'm not. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not saying Punk's behavior was was good. Or professional, or correct, or that appropriate. Like I'm not saying any of that. I'm not. I'm not defending Punk. I want to be clear here. I'm not defending Punk. But the fact that the elite went and confronted him in his locker room after that happened, I, in my mind, blame the elite for it becoming physical. Because if they had waited even a day and then met, not confronting him in his locker room, and met on a third party ground and it was like we're going to sit down and talk about this like it would not have become physical yeah i mean i think that 
the issue there is it's so weird. It's such a weird like the whole even now the Young Bucks Omega thing is super weird just because of the fact that it goes from Colt Cabana to Hangman to the the elite. And uh, it's also very interesting to me that Omega is not getting the, like, I don't know if you've noticed on the shows since Punk got fired, Mm -hmm. um, Omega has not been booed. They've been generally giving him the same face reaction, but the crowd is very, the crowd seems very against the Young Bucks. Also, you got to realize that they've been doing some stuff with FTR, and I think people are cheering the FTR more. Yeah, very true. Because no true. one's gonna cheer Takeshita and Don Callis just because it's Don Callis. Yeah, uh, I, th- I'll be honest. I thought that the only opportunity I thought where that was gonna happen was I didn't think they would cheer Don Callis, but I thought they would cheer Takeshka mm-hmm. against Omega in Chicago. Uh, like, like when Takeshka's from right, Chicago. like Takeshka would hit a big move oh. and they would cheer, and then like or like when they if they would do the punches with the boo yeah they would reverse it and boo yeah. Omega and cheer to Kashka. Like I thought that was gonna happen in Chicago. No, I think this only because they were in Chicago. I think the story is being told well enough that um there's no there's no alliance because of the fact that they want retribution for what Don Callis did. Right. And and I think and and in it, hindsight, and we've known this for a while, wrestling fans are fickle. Fickle. They're so fickle. They're <laughs> They'll so be like, fickle. oh, is CM Punk gone? Okay, well who do we have left? Omega? Yeah, we'll cheer for him. We'll cheer for that guy. Um, so there are so many things with AEW I want to bring up. Go ahead. Oh my god. Go ahead, bring them up. I I had some stuff, but if you have plenty okay, of stuff, first go thing, for it. first thing I want to bring up is something that I texted about last night in the chat. Um, I don't like that AEW. I, I or let me rephrase that. I don't like most AEW tournaments. I know you because you've, most you've of had the time last tournament too. Yeah, because most of the time they're like, "Hey, here's this uh tournament. It's uh eight people and uh b- d- we're going to have two matches tonight, two matches on Friday, two matches on Saturday, and the finals are going to be next Wednesday." And I'm like, "Does how much does this tournament matter that we did it all in one fucking week?" The like, weirdest part is it's like like I don't care. There's a weird pageantry to it that you're like, "I already know who's going to wind up at the end." Yes, that's the other thing. There's, it's, it's, um, most of the tournaments are like clear as day who's going to be at the finals. The thing that confuses me is that if, if they do, and this is the thing. So, who do you think's winning the, the tournament? Just say, just say one, the, just say the name because I, I, I'm going to tell you where I'm confused at. Strong. Really? Yes. I think the opposite. I think Samoa Joe's going to win and then Strong is going to face Adam Cole. Interesting. Because the fact that how would you have oh. Roderick Strong beat Samoa Joe? Sorry, I should clarify something. Go ahead. Strong is going Strong wins the tournament. So Strong uh-huh. gets the championship match at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Okay. Because Joe is getting the match at the pay per view. Okay. And so then you get strong Adam Cole at the pay per view. You get strong Adam Cole at the pay per view, and you get Joe MJF okay. main event of the pay per view. Strong wins the tournament. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, pretty much we're yeah. We're, Sorry, I should have clarified have that. That's why. Up for yes, it. I should have clarified. That's the reason why I think Strong wins the Both tournament. Both are going to happen, but okay, so right, you right, think right, he's right, gonna... right. Because I think MJF Joe is a big match. You save it for. Um, you do that for Russell Dream. Yeah. Joe and MJF. Okay. And then the other match you can and then you can do Adam Cole and and Roger Strong at Russell Dream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yours is Sorry. I should have clarified no, that. No, no, no. That's it's a good point cuz I was like I think I think it's weird to do Samoa Joe losing to Roderick after he just beat him in the tournament in the yeah. Owen Hart thing. And I'm like, well, I mean, so there's like I mean, it's po- there's possible because there could be multiple ways they can go, right? Like he can because milk they his both, neck again. He can milk his neck. He has uh, the two. He has the uh, the two guys at ringside. Mm-hmm. Um, both of them now have issues with uh, Adam Cole, and there's now the intertwinedness of Adam Cole and MJF, and with both superstars. So it could be that Adam Cole and MJF do something to inadvertently have strong win. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's like MJF could interfere and do something against Joe because he's pissed. Adam Cole could try to stop an interference and 
accidentally let uh, Strong win. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last time Strong and Joe fought, Joe beat Strong up and put him in the neck brace, Mm -hmm. which there was like a whole thing on commentary uh, when Joe was wrestling where they were talking about how uh, Strong is pointing out that it took longer for Adam Cole to come to Strong's rescue when Joe was beating him up than MJF. So like that's anyway. Um, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that that there are like there are ways that they could trick out a strong win over Joe, so then Joe gets the championship match two weeks later at the pay per view, because I think it's yeah. only two weeks until Wrestle Dream after Arthur Ashe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you you it, I didn't think of it that way, and I'm like, oh yeah, you you're thinking way farther off, and right. I'm not. I'm like just well, like, so cause, what's gonna happen at Grand Slam? Right. Well, so because then the only other thing that I can think of is that they do the inverse, which is Joe wins, fights MJF at at um at Arthur Ashe, and then Strong fights MJF at Russell. Like, because otherwise, yeah. I'm like, what's MJF's match for Russell Dream? I find it be it would be weird to have. I think that was the part of my head. I was like, I thought it'd be weird to have strong beat Joe somehow, even though he already fought him like not even that long ago, mm-hmm. and he's still in the neck brace because of it. So it's like when, especially the, well, the, at this point, the neck brace is a gimmick. Yeah, the 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 but the the the, the neck brace is love. a is a shining reminder to go. Oh right, that's the guy who put him in it. Like mm-hmm. so, I'm like, I'm like, well, we already did this then. Like that's where yeah. like I'm like, yeah, I don't get it. Which in terms of storytelling is fucking awesome fucking brilliant that like these guys are the the fact that like he's he's it's still in still in the neck brace quote unquote he's using it as his gimmick now which i think is awesome i think strong with the Mm -hmm. neck brace and the whole like thing is fucking awesome Mm -hmm. and the promos he's doing backstage where he's sitting in the fucking perfect um talking about his life yeah but then for like him to fight joe and joe has a thing with mjf and last time they fought he put him in the neck brace he's also messed up mjf so Cole wants revenge on Joe too, and so does MJF. Strong wants revenge on Joe, but there's also like Strong is crazy, so like MJF doesn't want to help him, and Adam Cole's like, "What's the like?" It's a it's a really interesting yeah. like dynamic that no matter who they would have put in this tournament, I would have wanted the finals to be Strong and Joe. Uh, the tournament itself could have been um, built up a lot better, could have been showcased a lot better, could have done a lot better with their selection of who's in the tournament. Um, I have a question. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, do you think the shoehorning in after All Out with... Because we had a setup for MJF with Roderick Strong. Yeah. Do you think Samoa Joe was shoehorned in because of CM Punk? It's definitely possible. Because, I mean, it's... It's definitely possible. I think because of the real world championship... It could have been, you know, a concept of, oh, well, we'll just use Samoa Joe since we don't have him anymore. We don't have the other guy anymore. Right. Ideally, you would probably have. Because obviously they were going to go for that eventually. The right. Whole right. Thing. But I Which don't know. Which the, the more likely scenario, the most likely scenario is it would have happened at Russell Dream or Full Gear. Yeah. Um, And then obviously we know that it was supposed to be, he, he was supposed to be taking, uh, he was supposed to be in Daniel Bryan's spot. And doing the strap match with, yeah, um, Ricky. They said that he replaced. See, here's the thing: like, if if CM Punk was the brand split issue, we shouldn't have a brand split issue anymore. It should I, just be like, hey, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a brand split issue. I think you're going to see more talent uh, appearing on both shows. I do like. The idea of having some talent be featured on certain shows Mm -hmm. more often than others because it promotes and gives them the ability to expand and use the talent pool that they have. I'm almost, it's tough because I'm almost like, I'm almost in favor of a brand split because of the fact that AEW has too much talent and it would force them to use the talent as opposed to having like the gun club or, or bullet club gold fucking on both shows constantly. Like it would force them to mm-hmm. use uh, like Keith Lee, 
Keith Lee did a promo where he was like, oh, I'm, uh, last night, where he's like, I'm on collision, and, like, y'all better run and shit. And I'm like, okay, do something then. And, like, not this, like, I'm going to do a squash match and disappear for three fucking weeks like they did with Miro. And, yeah. and they do they do with Hobbs. And I'm like, no, Hobbs. these guys need to be on the fucking show consistently. It's a weird thing, too, because they do that with a lot of big guys. Right. Because Wardlow was doing that for a while. He was just squashing people. Yeah, I would love to see... Uh, I also... It's tough, because I also like the dynamic of the Darby Allen, Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne, AR Fox storyline thing. But there's, like, part of me that's also, like, can we, like get the TNT title onto like Hobbs or Miro or something and like be like, oh yeah. And like, not forever, but for a little while, like the international championship can be like the workhorse title. And it's like a really all in these matches or whatever. And like, can we make the TNT title just like big fucking meaty men slapping meat? Like let fucking Hobbs and Miro and Keith Lee and Lance and, for that. and Lance Archer and Wardlow like Wardlow fucking beat the shit out of each other in like a, an almost Brian heavyweight Cage. division. Brian Cage, yeah, like an almost heavyweight division where they can just beat the shit out of each other and let some of the smaller guys get in there every once in a while and stuff. I'll be honest, but, I'd like to see Shane Taylor in there too. That guy was good. Yeah, like let's like let's do something with and and you're absolutely right some of the bigger talent like they have this problem where like the bigger talent don't seem to get like this right you know so i think i think that that needs to happen and that's one of the again one of the reasons why i'm almost like as much as i don't want a brand split i almost do want a brand split because it'll force you. AEW to use their talent consistently and, and use dynamite for one person and then use collision for the other so you're not going right you know having everybody everywhere right and, and it would it it would uh, yeah and you'd be able to use people like and then like Darby Allen isn't on every goddamn show wrestling a match on every like Darby Allen is consistently on every fucking show every week wrestling a match yeah and it's like Darby Allen's cool but like at some point I'm gonna get bored of him because it's yeah. too much and he's also sorry but he's taken a spot from somebody else yeah, at that yeah, point yeah. no I agree I was gonna say that before you you when you mentioned him um. I, yeah, I, been... I think that's a, sorry, one thing I want to throw out there. I think that's a legitimate risk with Darby Allen right now. I would, I'm legitimately worried if he consistently is appearing on every show and wrestling on every show that like four months down the line, we're going to be like, I'm tired of seeing Darby Allen and now, I don't like him anymore. Do you, do you feel as if they could do a lot? Cause like, so they do it with the women, but they don't do it enough with the men, which is. Having multi man matches, I think, will help get people out there. Yeah. Because you could do, for example, and I'm just saying this, uh, you know, for Wrestle Dream or Full Gear coming up or whatever, you could do Luchasaurus, Miro, Will Hobbs, and Brian Cage, somebody, just, just run out people. Yeah. And just go, well, these four people are all against each other and they're all going to be in the match you'll be able to see more more people are going to be on the shows and you're not sacrificing singles matches to go we're having this match versus these people and then these people and then and then this grudge match we don't have time for because it's not it's just a singles match and no one really cares too much about it it's like there's so many more people you could use in a situation and not do a tag team match all the time and go uh they're doing a tag team match for the you know whatever or some battle royal where everyone's in it you, yeah you're they highlighting could. the these people like will hobbs and miro to be in a fatal four-way with whoever the champion is or like you know say you even do it with john moxley where john moxley's in a fatal four-way with will hobbs and wardlow and and orange cassidy like just put somebody in there so there's multiple people they're all getting spotlight and the main event or the pay-per-view match is going to be all four of them fighting together because you have enough people where I'm sure I've seen Will Hobbs versus Orange Cassidy. I'm sure I've seen Moxley versus Will Hobbs. I'm sure I've seen all these people fight each other one on one. You need to start for pay per views, changing it up and being like, "We're gonna have a bunch of these people have a spotlight." And I'm not saying all of them. Yeah, all of the matches I, for the pay per view. I'm saying right, like I, have one in there every like the last big fatal four way we had was the MJF the Four Pillars one. Right. And I'm like, we should do more of those so we're having more of a storyline with multiple people and everyone's getting the spotlight mm -hmm. because that's what they did with the four of them. They all got their, you know, 
Yeah, no, I like that idea. I, I mean, I would caution triple against... Triple threats, triple threats too. Mm. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I would caution a little bit against like not overdoing it, but I mean, you did state yeah. that you don't want to overdo it. Do like one every couple like, of pay-per-views. Yeah, because it's, it's, um, that is one thing that I that I actually enjoy about AEW is it feels like they pay more attention to this like one-on-one and like, so then, like for example, right, like the championship... Uh, the the main championship, the world championship, is almost exclusively defended in one on one contests, which yeah. I I really like. Yeah. Um, and maybe only once a year will you get a world championship match that is a triple threat or a fatal four way, which is so contradictory to WWE, where like it feels like they you know constantly are like just throwing a whole bunch of people yeah. into a match, um, to have a multi man match. Uh, so I, I mean, I would just caution against that as like not overdoing it. I mean, but, when you look but, at Samoa Joe and MJF, you go, "This is someone where I go, oh, I want to see these guys one on one." Right. But there are titles where you can, you're not giving enough attention to that you can go, "This person wants to," t-, and even do like a tournament style thing, mm-hmm. like you said. Where, like, but instead of having a final match between two of people, be like after just do like a quarterfinal match. That person who wins that match is placed in that tr- four, fiddle four way or yeah. whatever. And be like, okay, these are the four people that qualified. They're going to be in the main event at the at the pay per view. Yeah, and it, and if you're going to do, which is um, weird because they do it with the women. They did that too. with the women, yeah, all the time. And I'm like, why do they do this with the women but not the men? Yeah, and, and if you're going to do it, let's let's pick people. Let's make the tournament mean something. Let's have it consistently. Like, oh, we're going to have one match on dynamite and one match on collision every week or we're going to or it's going to be a dynamite exclusive tournament and we're going to do two matches on dynamite every week or one match on dynamite like like let's make the tournament and mean something don't make it gimmicky where like if you do a triple threat for example like uh Miro and Miro say Miro uh versus Mox so you don't have Will Hobbs come out and interfere and be like oh I guess he's going to get a match make it legitimately make sense for the three of them to fight yeah, see, I think AEW does a real. That's one thing I think AEW does a really yeah. good job with is not the like weird WWE shoehorning of yeah. people into into We're matches. Like, well, this match is ruined. What do we do now? Or the or the in. or the constant um, interference. Uh, the constant uh thing where they're <laughs> where they're like we have this tag match. This guy interfered. This other guy interfered. Restart this match. It's a six man tag. Like yeah. they do shit like that all the time. Yeah. Uh, AEW you having a, doesn't do that. You having a six man tag match player? Yeah, like uh, like I I distinctly remember the one time where AEW started the show with a promo, and at the end of the promo, it was like, okay, this is the match you're gonna have for the main event of that show, and it felt unique because AEW doesn't do that. Yeah, and WWE fucking does it every goddamn yeah. week. I like I like the concept of the booking with AEW too. WWE makes me so mad where they're like, like for example, I watched SmackDown and they were had they had the Judgment Day in the ring talking about how how defiant and how big they are and how great they are, and then the brawling brutes came out and they're like, ah, oh, well we think we're better than you, and then literally after they're done talking, or they the brawling brutes knocked them out of the ring and then they got to the the, the rampway they go up next these two go against each other I'm like wait why didn't they just do that yeah why is there gotta be this big like social conversation and then go all right up next uh this match is starting up yeah i sent you i sent you that thing on instagram mm-hmm. from fightful select mm-hmm. where it's literally the woman was like i'm just so tired of this thing that i didn't need to know and then commercials and then another thing i didn't need to know and then more commercials she's like i just and i'm like that's exactly how i feel when i'm watching the show i feel like i'm like wait we're going back into another fucking commercial and it's just like w- why why are you and then and then the best part is like you're watching it it was it Sammy Zayn fought somebody on Monday and they cut to something outside or in, in the back and then they cut back to Sammy Zayn. His music is still playing. He's in the ring like waiting for the other person to come out. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, just fucking do the Have match. Ever, yeah. So um, I don't know if you've ever been there live when they do stuff like that. So what happens is they went to commercial. Uh, Sammy Zayn's music stopped. He grabbed a mic. More than likely, he grabbed a microphone and did a promo and then gave the microphone back. They were like, "Okay, we're going back, you know, live in five, four, and his music starts up in the three, two, and then." I hate that's, that. That's that's usually how stuff like that I works. I still love that reaction that that Kevin Kevin Owens had, where he was watching the Titan Tron and was like, "They just showed this. Why are they doing this?" Like you can hear him verbally be like pissed off, be like, 
You d- it just happened last week. Why are they showing this? You mm-hmm. already know this happened. He's like, what are we, what are they doing? He's like, well, this just happened. What are you what are you guys doing? Just bring them bring them out. I'm like, yeah. And that was around the time that like his contract was coming up. And I'm like, please just leave. <laughs> You're so good. Just please leave. I think he resigned, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He ended up resigning. Yeah. So we uh, at least for right now, we're not getting the Mount Rushmore. Uh, of professional uh, wrestling. That's what Cole, Cole, Bucks, the Young Bucks, and, and Owens, Owens, Steen. Which is Sorry. if he leaves, he'll go back to Kevin Steen. Kevin Steen. Um. All right. Here's He's my a good ne- wrestler, eh? He is a good wrestler, eh? So here's my next thing. Here's my next thing. Go ahead. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. What about him? Are he there no? Are there no? Are there no credible challengers? For like any fucking championship in AEW. What do you mean? That fucking everybody is just like, I'm, we're what gonna do, do an open challenge. We're gonna do an open challenge. Moxley's doing open challenges constantly. Chris Statlander's doing open challenges. Open open challenges constantly. Are the backbone of the, our championship. The fucking <laughs> FTR's you, doing open challenges that's now. How you build credibility. I'm like Jesus Christ. Listen, it's there's we, we, no you know, credible challengers off, for just, any listen, fucking. We just came off all out. We need to get a you know story building up. You know? There's not even a story building up. Who I'm just watching random is, matches. Hey, listen, who isn't having an open challenge? The world heavyweight t- champion, because we already know what he's going to be doing. We know what he's doing. So they have to build something up, and that's why I we have the like, return. I feel like it's because they have no idea. We what had they're a big doing. return last night. The storm was a coming. That's true. The storm was a coming. So Jade maybe Cargill she'll stop is doing. Back. You know, it'd be funny if next week she does an open challenge. Jade Cargill doesn't answer it. Some other random bloke again. You think? What was that random bloke? Random bloke. Oi. Oi. Fucking random bloke. <laughs> Fucking twins, yeah? Don't know which one's which. Don't give a fuck, yeah? Yeah. Get him, on, just, get him on Ring of Honor. I just... I Don't give a shit. It's... I feel like... I feel like the open challenge thing is cool if you do it right. And I feel like it's not cool because... Everybody's doing it. Like, it'd be cool if it was just Chris Statlander doing it. But, like, nah, John Moxley's doing it too. And he's doing it twice in the same week. And then, like, FTR is like, oh, he did fight somebody on Wednesday. And then FTR is like, we're going to start doing open challenges now. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm sure what the open challenge will fuck shoot me. <laughs> I'm sure FTR's open challenge will lead into their next competitor. I mean, we have Chris's next competitor that obviously they're right. going to push towards. John Moxley, I feel like it's just gonna do that like Orange Cassidy did till he f- has a legitimate storyline. Well, see now, it. I feel like he's he's got. I feel like he's got two legitimate storylines going on now because like they got like the Ricky Starks and Big Bill against them, and um, and Ray Phoenix still wants his revenge. Revenge. So I. So I'll make my prediction now. Because they announced Big Bill versus John Moxley for the championship on Wednesday. Okay. Moxley wins. Arthur Ashe Stadium will do Moxley and Starks. Danielson oh. against Starks and Big Bill tag match. Oh, I think I just do Starks versus. Ah. Uh, see, I did Starks tag match. versus Moxley for the Grand Slam. Could I'd want to see that. You could I even have fucking Starks but, win the title. I don't give a fuck. The only problem is then, but like Daniel Bryan got beat up, so like he's got to get. Gotta get his, All right, gotta which is why I thought tag match. He gotta get his. Andy. He's gotta get his, and then um, right. and and so the reason I say that is you get that match at Arthur Ashe, get Ray Phoenix versus Moxley at Russell Dream. Yeah, maybe, but but here here's the thing: because Ray Phoenix wants his. Here's the thing, Kibbles. What if he just beats the shit out of Ray again? Because <laughs> he beat the shit out of. Him. I'm okay with that if, if it's a good match. I don't care who the winner is. Okay, that's true. But he did beat the shit out of him. Brian Danielson is fighting Zack Sabre Jr. That match is going to be fucking awesome. When? Right, you, did you watch the show last I night? didn't see when they said that. Oh, he it was when he was doing the promo. Oh, I didn't see the promo. Oh, so Brian Danielson came out and he was like, um, I, got, I got respect for Ricky Starks. He then also said that he promised his daughter that when she turned seven, he would retire. And so he then said, she's six right now. And he said, so if, if he goes, if this is going to be the last year of my wrestling career, then I'm going to go out in a blaze. And he goes, I'm also going to call my shots. And he, so then he goes, 
He goes, Wrestle Dream, I want Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, okay. And people were like, oh, shit. Well, that was the, f- that was the Forbidden Door match that we were Right, that we missed game. because yeah. he got injured. Um, Did when he get he... his leg stuck in the ring? That was why he got injured? Mm. I thought that no, I thought he, he had a concussion. His... Oh, that yeah, that might be it, too. You might be right, actually. Uh, so when he when he had started the promo, I was like, okay, as he's going, I was like, he's either going to say Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, or he's going to turn to the thing and point to Nigel McGuinness. Oh, I thought you were going to see him and punk. No, I, I think that's <laughs> out the door. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Eventually, we're going to get Nigel, Nigel McGuinness. I, I, I really thought it was going to be Nigel McGuinness. Yeah. Uh, and then he went Zack Sabre Jr. as I had makes sense. I think CM Punk would have been on that list if he hadn't gotten fired. Uh, he got fired? He did, with cause. I love how you said you said he was he was going to go out in a blaze, and I was like, in my head, he just starts, he just pulls out a joint and lights it. <laughs> he lights it up. I'm going to go out in a blaze. <sighs> he seems like the kind of guy who would enjoy some cannabis. You think? No. I mean, he wouldn't enjoy it, but he'd be like, here. here's he's what I He's definitely say. for the environment, but he doesn't do drugs. So right. I'm like, uh, my opinion is he looks like he looks somebody like, who would yes, be into it. Absolutely. Um, Given his personality and who he is, I don't think he would be. Yeah, isn't he isn't he straight edge as well? Or something? Yes. Um, and he, I don't know if he still is anymore, but he was a vegan at one point. I think he still is. Um. Anyway, too many open challenges. If the Andrew doesn't like it, who the fuck is Andrew? I'm sorry, Kibbles doesn't like it. Um. The uh, what else? Ben, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I think those are most of my AEW thoughts. Oh, we didn't even uh, all out was last week. Did we talk? Oh, we didn't talk. We about didn't. That. Uh, the it main, was all right. Here, the main thing I want to bring up. Actually, there's two things, but the main thing I want to bring up. Go ahead. Jesus Christ, Brian Daniels had beat the fucking shit out of Ricky <laughs> Starks. <laughs> Holy shit! It was, there was a lot of lot of stuff going on. That was fucking assault. Even even um even even isn't like see I had an issue. He with was it. committing a crime. I was, it was if you just turn on the TV, seeing Ricky and Brian beating the shit at each other, I would have been like, that is a hate crime. Yeah, I was that like, is, holy that shit, is a hate crime. Uh, that man is whipping that man with a with a strap. There was apparently I was listening to some podcasts and they were like, yeah. Uh, there was some other like brutal. Oh, they were talking about John Cena and Randy Orton. There was a a no DQ match or an I quit match or something mm-hmm. where Cena got handcuffed and his hands were be- were like up above him, were behind him on the ring post, and and Randy Orton beat the shit out of him with a kendo stick, um, like on the ribs, like left marks and shit. And yes. so the the person on the podcast was making a joke, and he was like Brian Danielson was probably there when that happened. And he goes, you know, Brian Danielson was like, I'm going to be in a strap match. I remember that one time Randy Orton beat the shit out of John Cena. I'm going to make that look like child's play. Yeah. Like, like that was fucking brutal. I do like the, that match. Holy shit. I do like the point he made. Uh, the last person I was in a strap match with is with someone I loved. I was like, that's nice. That was cool. I didn't realize he was, uh, I, I had forgot completely forgotten he was match, in yeah. a strap match with Bray Wyatt. I, I didn't watch that match. It was back when I wasn't watching anymore. Somebody else brought it up. Somebody else was like, oh, he means Bray Wyatt. And I was like, oh, shit, he does mean Bray Wyatt. I didn't think WWE did the matches like that anymore. Uh, I mean, other than that one, I can't really think of the last time they had one. Yeah. that's. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the line that you can show where, one, Brian Danielson doesn't, isn't meant to be in WWE, and two, they gave so much... Uh, reliance or faith on Bray Wyatt. That's why I respect him so much. Like I never really watched him, but like the shit he did, I feel like without the complete confidence of him doing doing something that people are gonna like, they let him go and do what mm-hmm. he wanted to do. He he had a he had a fa- a stretched out flesh face with scary eyes and teeth and all this. And they let him get away with it, considering it's like, yeah, our product is now children, most of them, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, this is okay. It's just like that's, yeah, that's he, crazy. <laughs> yeah, he um, 
he's a very creative mind that honestly when he got let go by WWE I actually really wanted him to go into film like I really wanted him to go yeah. be the lead character the lead person in a horror movie even writing I feel yeah like he could have just produced movies yeah like I like my when they let him go my first thought was like I really want to see him go fucking be the Bray Wyatt character in now not exactly the Bray Wyatt character but like that backwoodsy even, cult leader Bray Wyatt like I in, wanted to see him be that in a movie where he can be he doesn't have to like cater or talk to a PG audience he can be rated R and like yeah fully even, invent into the even character. if he went to AEW he could have no problems either I mean back then we didn't have Uncle Howdy he could have did Uncle Howdy or he could have had no problem creating a brand new character to be in AEW and mm-hmm. be like that new thing. Yeah, um, Chris Jericho uh, uh, on his podcast. I mean, this was years ago at this point because it was when the Fiend character it was a couple weeks after the Fiend character debuted, and uh, it might it might have actually even been right after SummerSlam when he first when he came when he was in the like came out and was in the ring for the very first time. Yeah. The like lights go off. Yeah, um, Chris Jericho had the maker of the mask, Tom Savini, on his podcast, and um, the guy talked about like how he worked with Bray Wyatt to create the mask, what Bray Wyatt's input was on creating the mask. He talked a lot about his background in film and stuff. The yeah. the guy, not Bray Wyatt, that is right in the thirteenth. Yeah, and he and he was on set when they were filming and creating the Firefly Funhouse segments. And he talked about how much of that was nobody else but Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Like how much of that was Bray Wyatt's brainchild. And he came, and he had come up with so many of the ideas and how he was able to like take this character and really make him he iconic. He would have fucking killed an AEW. Oh, absolutely. He would have fucking destroyed it. I, th- I think his only... I think his only potential downfall, and it would de- it would depend on how they would do the character and present whatever character he came up with. I think his mm-hmm. only downfall in AEW would be the fact that I think the whole like woogie boogie lights thing uh, and kind of stuff I don't feel like plays quite as well with the AEW audience. Um, let's some of the things that 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 he did. As like the fiend. Well, I think yeah, um, I think he would have went a lot more rated R with it though. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying it wouldn't have worked. I, I think he. I just mean like he would have had to change certain aspects of how he presents certain things to the mm-hmm. AEW audience, just because the audience is different than the WWE audience. But ultimately, like also given the fact that a lot of the adult audience liked what Bray was doing in WWE, makes would have transitioned really well. Like, I think, for example, yeah. the red lights. Like, the red lights with The Fiend, I don't think would have gone over... Like, would have gone over worse in AEW than WWE. Yeah, um, I don't know. Because I of... think the fans would have been more vocal in the audience about it not being cool. I don't know. I think a lot of AEW people liked... I mean, as far as me, I, I liked a lot of the stuff that... There's people that were shining when I was watching AEW, mm-hmm. and that was Bray Wyatt... Over there on WWE, the people who had creative de- creative ability to do whatever they wanted, and Bray Wyatt's one that stands out the most for me, mm-hmm. even though I didn't watch it. Yeah, he was doing stuff that he was allowed to get away with that would been would have been like, you know, PG or it uh, is yeah. attitude error. It is very interesting that he was. Even it is very dropping, interesting that he was able to get away with a lot dropping of things the he did. blood on Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. That's that's one of the things I'm like they they would have they that's like an that's a fucking not only that not only a uh, attitude error thing but like a fucking nitro thing because they've done it on WCW before too. Yeah, it is very interesting that he was able to push the envelope in the way that he did, and it's probably also a testament to how he was backstage and how he was able to articulate his plans and his chain and and roll with the punches and stuff like yeah. that like there, there's there's got to be a reason why he was able to do it and it's and the reason isn't just because vince or triple h said it was okay like, i think he had to have convinced them i think for him it's one of he is one of the most scariest scariest besides like maybe like the boogeyman 
Probably one I'm of the, the boogeyman. Oh, I thought you were gonna do the whole and thing. And I'm coming to get you. I think he was the one, one of the most scariest. Like probably him and Boogeyman are like tied for first as far as scary. Because when you look at Taker, or you look at Malachi, or if you look at Kane, or Gangrel, mm-hmm. they're not like actually legitimately like scary. It's like they're going to take me somewhere, and I'm just gonna disappear. The Bray Wyatt and Boogeyman, you're like, oh, something gross is gonna happen, and I don't know what it is. Yeah, whether it's the worm thing. Mm-hmm. Or with the Bray boogeyman Wyatt. was more gross than scary. Well, that's the thing. When you look at the fiend, it's like he just looks revolting, mm-hmm. and he just you know he doesn't have a facial expression. He's just the mask. But yeah, like, have that you gone concept of him just like laughing and yeah? Have you gone back and seen a lot of the old um, Bray White cult leader uh, stuff? Because yes. I don't I don't know if you were watching at that at that point or that time, and like there was stuff like I had forgotten about that I was like, oh my god, that was like really cool. Like when they had first debuted. They attacked Kane and whatever, and then a week or two later, it was like uh, they had attacked somebody else or whatever, and it was like a week or two later, and they were like, "Oh, we've Bray Wyatt has allowed us to send a cameraman into the Wyatt compound to like talk to him," and like they turn the camera on and they go to go through the house, and like they're going through the house, and Luke Harper is like, "Follow me, um, don't stop and don't stray." Or something like that, and as they're like walking through the camera, like you hear like some guy mumbling or whatever, and so like Luke keeps walking, and the camera guy stops and like opens up this door that's right next to him, and there's like a guy with like a bag over his head, and he's just going obey, 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 and then Harper like comes out of nowhere, slams the door shut, and he's like, I told you not to wander, and then like leads you back to Bray, like shit, like like little that's, stuff like that. That's, like, that's so cool. That's that's creepy weird that's like that i think his cult thing was on the level of like taker and kane and like i th- i feel like the fiend is so much bigger than is, everyone else the fiend is way bigger than that and it's really a shame that they fucking killed that character so quickly jesus christ and then like the the him, like i said him and the boogeyman i'm like i have no clue what they were gonna do next yeah they um because like boogeyman was insane but like fiend was just fucking creepy and it's a shame that they killed his character so fast. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know if you knew this. Um, so his first match was Finn Balor at SummerSlam. Yeah, I remember that. That was cool. His second match was Seth Rollins for mm-hmm. the championship in Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. You know how that match ended? Wait, no, that can't be. <coughs> that was 2019, right? That the like the. Like I've heard of like mm-hmm. people calling it the worst Hell in the Cell match ever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then they ended on like a DQ or something, or like yep. the, no no contest. Yep. That's that match. Yep. Second. Yep. His second match in. They killed the fiend that quick. That's. What I was the fuck? I was like I was like wow they're really like messing with the like. If it was I mean I get it if it's a normal person but they were also like. They're also at that point and still after that, that, you know, building up the fiend as this guy that like you do all these things to and he just keeps coming back. And um yeah, that was how they and that so that was the fiend's second match. Um which is why like there's part of me that's like, Man, it's a real shame they fucking killed the fiend that quick. Like Yeah, I didn't think it was um, that quickly. You you know it's a bad finish when um at that time I don't think they do them anymore, but at that time WWE was doing watch alongs on their YouTube channel. Where they would have like, uh, they would have um, like two personalities. Like it'd be like Kathy Kelly and somebody else would yeah, be watching, that. would be watching the show live, and they'd be talking about it. And they made it a point to like always have wrestlers come in and watch, and and or like they'd have guests Yo, and ooh, stuff. Scary. Um, and so everyone was sitting there because they obviously don't know how things end, and they were all sitting there, and they were like, "Wait, that's." A- that's how they end this? How do they... And they had X-Pac. And uh, X-Pac was their guest. And X-Pac was like... Literally had to get bleeped because he was like, how the fuck do you end a Hell in a Cell on a DQ like that? And like... Um, then they were like... A bunch of people were talking trash about it. Like, you know it's bad when your wrestlers are talking trash about the finish <laughs> on your watch-along show. The second guest was Ron Simmons. And you know what he said. He was like, damn! Oh. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, dude. Bray, yeah. As much as I didn't, I didn't appreciate him when he was happening. He did so much that would have mm-hmm. been fucking killed in AW because it would have let him. They would have let him get along, get away with a lot more. Yeah. So 
Also, interestingly enough, because people bleed on that show, people do bleed. Uh, interestingly enough, something that um, I noticed with the Fiend, but they never played into, at least not to my recollection, they never played into it. Um, and something that I think they should have played into it, maybe if the Fiend thing had gone longer or whatever, um, they played into, uh, or they should have played into the fact that for. For a long time, everybody who came up against the fiend um, changed by by the way that uh, through through fighting the fiend or through losing to the fiend. So, like the first example is Finn Balor. So, fiend comes in, obliterates Finn Balor. Balor disappears for like four or five months, and when he comes back, he's back as like. He when he comes back, he comes back in NXT, and he's like this badass Finn Balor guy who's like a heel and doesn't give a shit about anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas on the main roster, he was a face. Uh, then it was Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins was a face. Uh, he defeated Seth Rollins, and then I want to say it was like shortly after that Rollins changed and started doing the um, like Messiah gimmick. It was like he got beat, disappeared for a month, came back, and he was doing like the Messiah gimmick where he had... Monday Night Messiah. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Bryan was a heel and was not doing the yes stuff. Like all that was kind of like done. And uh, uh, and then he came up against the Fiend. The Fiend like did all these devious things and like cut his hair and like... Or cut his beard and like did a bunch of other stuff. And then Daniel Bryan turned face and started embracing the yes chance again and like turned face and did this whole thing. Uh, And there was somebody else, but it was like every, and those were like consecutive feuds. So it was like every time that he came up against somebody, um, he would either, you know, he'd win the first match or he'd beat them or like sometimes they, they wouldn't ever beat him. Right. But it was like through the course of the feud, the person had to change. Mm -hmm. The person changed because of this monster that they were fighting. And I felt like that was such a cool concept that like they never played into it all or like uh, uh, uh i think maybe the next the next feud was probably bill goldberg where he lost the championship which was fucking stupid um and then um and then it was probably randy orton which like you know that didn't end great uh but it was like uh somehow alexa bliss got intertwined and so then her character changed and and so like even uh, really Randy Orton changed too didn't he yeah like it it just was really I don't know it was it was just really cool that like there was this character that like fucking affected everybody like he 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 changes you like he 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 like you can't you can't fight him and come out the same person that you were before changes you inside and out exactly even outside of the ring like when they the man touched many lives oh yeah that's what I meant okay I mean, like, like when they, a lot of people loved him, and also he changed the characters as well. Yeah, like how they try to make cage matches and shit like seem like a big deal by being like, "Oh, uh, uh, the, the people go into this match and they never come out the same, except fucking everybody comes out the same." Like, yeah. uh, they're all fine two weeks later. Um, well, but it was like this character fucking changed the other characters in the show as he fought them, which I just found fascinating, and they never like went into it and i'm like they sh- that could have been a whole like a huge thing with this mm-hmm. with this person with this character and like that's where you get like a fucking baby face a, a white hot baby face who's like i recognize that people change when they fight the fiend but i'm not going to change and like you can't you can't change me and then like you start having those little things where like he he might be a little heelish and then he like snaps out of it because he realizes he's acting differently kibbles what about the fucking What amazing. about the John Cena? They should have done it. What about the John Cena? It would have been fucking perfect with John Cena. John Cena. John Cena. Yes, John Cena. He would have been the fir- he would have been the perfect character that would be like I'm not going to change when I fight you and then you show those little hints of it happening. Didn't they do WrestleMania? They did with the Firefly Funhouse match, which was really cool. It was really fun. I don't know if I Did you ever it. watch it? Yeah, we should do a watch along for that. It was one. Re- I thought it was really fun. We should do a watch along for that one. Okay, I thought it was really fun. I'll fucking try to tear it apart, even though it might be good. I'll probably try to. I'll probably. I mean, I don't like everything about it, but I I'll thought drop it was my, fun. I'll drop my trousers and try to shit on it as much as I can, if you say so. 
Um, Same WrestleMania uh, as the Boneyard match, The Undertaker's final match. Because uh, the Boneyard, because they did two cinematic matches that year because of COVID. Boneyard. That's what they call my bedroom. I'm sorry. That is what they call your bedroom. The boneyard. Boudons. It's a yard where you get boned. It's because where all your relationships go to die. Yay! Wait, what? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, Lots AEW right now is paint by numbers. Yep. You know who I'd love to get back is... Uh, oh, speaking of which, you want to talk about that Miro Hobbs thing with the shirt? Such yeah, a bad that's opportunity. Yeah, the other thing <laughs> It's the other thing. Fucking bad opportunity. It just says meat. What a fucking dog Great shit shirt. Fucking match. What Big fuck? meaty men slapping meat. Fucking terrible merch. Big meaty men slapping meat. I'm getting that fucking eventually. I'm gonna get terrible Soraya. merch. It's just a fucking <gasps> big meaty men slapping meat. Where is that tomorrow? Where do you see this? Right there. New arrivals. Oh, is that tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Yes. Big meaty men slapping meat. Go, there's a special one. What's the special one? It's I think white. it's just white. No, it's it's not quite white. It's just it's not like colored. Blue. Yeah, it's more of a blue. It's a different variant. I'm gonna buy that. I mm. I'm buying that. How is there only seven left? It does it. It, it says that all the time. It when it <laughs> comes out, it'll no say sense. ten. <laughs> it does that all. Th- literally seven every time. It says. see this. This sucks because they're I'm gonna buying that. because they're gonna charge me more for the one that looks way better. Yeah, well, I mean, either way, way it's better. one out of ten, so, you know. Ooh, Bang Bang Gang. I like that shirt. That's it's, a good idea. It's the hand of a handgun. And I'm getting Soraya, too. I'll be honest. It took The first time I saw this shirt, because I saw it earlier today, uh-huh. it took me... I was like, why is that font look so weird? And I'm, so glad, like, oh, you, it's a I'm so glad you went on the website, because on Monday morning when I'm at work, I forget that it's match up, Mash Up Monday. I'll have to bother you um, and be like, hey. I'm getting Soraya. The I'm going to buy Soraya. Micro the Brawler? Micro Brawler, yeah. Um, what a fucking dog shit shirt. That's okay. I'm gonna get. Fucking, that's why I told you. I told you after all out. I said if they make a poster of that match, I'm getting it because I'll remember forever. That's big, big, big meaty men slapping meat. I, I want it. I don't want to pay for it. I'm gonna pay for it. Because then that's another group. That's another two group of people that I do not have a poster for yet. Mm. So like, I have Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy the lights out with Dan House, and I want to have sign it as well. Um, I have the FTR, CM, CM FTR C- with the House the of Black. House of Black. That's a good one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. And then the other one is the Acclaimed versus uh, Swerve and Argoy for the mm. Grand Slam. God damn it. I kind of want this poster. I do. I want it so bad. What, is there a time it goes on sale? Yeah. Uh, one o'clock tomorrow. Now I just have to hope I'm not. One o'clock meeting. tomorrow. Mashup Mondays. I fucking love these posters. Uh, I'm gonna get another cover, another uh, frame, just like that one. So, like the I'll, ones I have already. I'll tell you one thing that I like. I already want to meet Powerhouse Hobbs. Next strong. Yeah, that's that was I saw that yesterday. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. I really like that. Um, it's a Roderick Strong, but it says Next Strong. Uh, so the original reason we got here is because um, there's a with, T-shirt with all of the meat that happened in that match. The best thing that they came up with was just a shirt, just that a shirt that says on "meat" on it. Dude, they could, you know what? They could have did. The they could have had meat forever. They could have had holy meat, holy meat. Maybe not beat that meat. Don't do that one. Um, Absolutely, do that one. Beat beat that meat probably would have been good too. What? What's that? It said uh, "championship" was back in stock, limited it's not. limited it's out quantities. Of stock. Uh, but then I click it. It's out of stock. And. Um, Gives me a 404. It's already out of stock. It's like $700. I'm not buying it. <laughs> um, no, I didn't mean to do that. Meet forever, though. Meet forever. Unless the unless the plan was to come out with meat and then like meet forever or something is going to be a topper of Tuesday. Oh. Oh, that would be interesting. No, they're going to do, they're going to have the same fucking design, but then change the color. I hope not. They're going to do that. See, they do be, that all the time with Top Row Tuesdays. Oh, that sucks. It, see, I would say it'd be, it would be really cool if they did it this Tuesday because Monday would be the poster. Tuesday, they come out with a special meat shirt. Yeah. That would be really cool. I feel like they would just do another a different color for it. Yeah. I want to see if meat is a top seller. I don't think it is. It is. It is a top seller. It is one of the top sellers. 
Probably because people are like, it's the only one, so we just have to get it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I demand satisfaction. I don't think that's good enough for a shirt to buy. I agree. I feel like that match was oh, yeah, so I'm not, much fun. I'm not fucking spending money on this fucking garbage meat, meat garbage shirt. shirt. I'll definitely buy that poster because I, I love that concept of having a poster for them. I do want that poster. I want I want I like to because I, I love I love collecting the concept of one out of ten. There's only been ten made. I want that, and then yeah. having it signed is even better. I uh, I like that new Omega shirt. Thank God you went on this today because I would have forgot yesterday and then would have missed out on the meat. Uh, the meat poster. As soon as I saw the poster, I was like, oh, oh, meaty man slapping meat. Also, it's very interesting. So this is this is the weekly top mm-hmm. sellers. It's a it's interesting. Punk got fired. One, two, three, four. There's four. If you count the FTR thing. Five. Yeah, another one. Six. Like, he's all over this fucking top sellers. I mean, that also could be the fact that uh, he's CM Punk right there. I like that. There's no, it's the nameplate. It's the nameplate for the title. Um, socks. His socks, socks are selling. His poster. Yeah, I mean, it could be because of the fact that people think that it's gonna go away. I already got all the stuff I want from CM Punk, so I mean, I don't really think. I'll... True. I mean, it. Well, so that's the thing, right? It might go off. It might leave shop AEW, but it'll be on Pro Wrestling Tees. Do you think that's all be, independent? But do you think he'll be like Cody Rhodes and be like on the alumni? Ooh. Yeah, go I don't to, know. Go to view posters to or view rosters. I said posters. View roster. Who's on the alumni now? Yep. Same punk Cody Rhodes. He, he, last time I checked, he was not on there. It was just Cody Rhodes. Nope, he's on there. Yep. So, I mean, people don't have to really worry too much about him going anywhere. He's still going to be on the alumni stuff. Cody, it's and been a as long whole as fucking he, year for Cody. Yeah. And as long as he doesn't sign, um, as long as he doesn't sign with WWE, that he doesn't have to take the merch down, so he can still sell mm-hmm. stuff through Pro Wrestling Tees because that's an independent uh, thing, and he owns the rights to his name. And I just stuff, think it's so. weird because it's like with, with the opposite. When you look at the two differences in John Cena and and CM Punk, is that CM Punk? I was thinking about buying that picture of the two of them, but then they, now that they're coming out with the poster, I don't need oh, to. this one. Yeah, I. Yeah, I looked at this one and was like, I'm not spending money on this. This is not a great Yeah, picture. I was like, I would rather have one of those mashup Monday posters and just get one of the ones. I did get like, this one. If oh, I did. And then when the poster comes out and go, this is when they're like, oh, why do you have Miro and Hobbs? I'm like, this is the big meaty men slap a meat match. Mm-hmm. Meat uh, forever. Yeah, I, I got the Moxley Kingston one. I almost also got the Orange Cassidy one because I do like that. So I think it's 1, 1 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. Now I'm set on it. I'm like, that's fucking, I'm buying that shit tomorrow. I do want that. Does it say when it's available? No. I'm pretty sure it's 1 p.m. The thing is, it sends me an email afterwards, and I'm like, it's already <laughs> sold out, you fuck. Too late, yeah. They're like, buy our, and I'm like, I'm not going to buy the other one. I'm buy buying the, the fucking one. 1 out of 10 one. Yeah. Fuck that you, shit. You dickhead. That's a cool uh, sheet of shirt. I do like that one. I don't like anime, but I do like that. That's cool. But yeah, so um, yeah, I guess uh, the main point I want to get across is big meaty men's love for me. Meat. The good part about that match was just it was just so it wasn't a it wasn't a bad match. The good part it was just about a that lot match of fun. was everything. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was probably the most because like normally the. F- Normally, the fun aspect of pro wrestling is like getting into the drama and like the like, oh my god, he kicked out, like ah, uh, like getting into like the the like intensity of it all. Uh, and that was an instance where it wasn't about that. It, it was about it was like the having fun. It was the equivalent of like going to an indie show and the crowd just saying whatever the fuck they yeah. felt like. That's what it reminded me of. Because then they they the both two of them fed off of that and just mm-hmm. kept doing stuff that was like getting the crowd pumped because oh, that's yeah. what had happened at an indie show. They would have been like, they would have been saying, tell them to shut up or tell them this or told them that, or then would have done stuff that was more relevant to what mm-hmm. they were saying. Oh yeah, because it was great. After they started chanting that, I think was when they got in the ring. And we're like, we're just gonna keep clotheslining each exactly. other and not fall and over. Like, uh, me, yeah. uh, yeah. me. And, and no one was wanted someone to win. It was just like just men beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. And then yell meat afterwards. I 
uh, I want a rematch. Yeah, <laughs> I want them to have a rematch yeah, so we can do it again. They're going to, aren't they? I feel like they're they're hope kind so. of building towards that. I, I think. hope so because if they have a rematch, the audience better fucking do that shit again. Yeah. Uh, um, my my only WWE question for you. Yeah. Who goes to SmackDown? Mommy. Wait, what? Uh, uh what are you saying? Uh, so remember how Jay Uso is now on Raw? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently on Raw, um. Adam Pierce or somebody said to Jey Uso about like, oh, this wasn't like a, we're just picking you, or like we're just getting you for nothing. Somebody is going to go to SmackDown and there was like, like th- th- he like said it like really weirdly, like he was like, somebody's got to go to SmackDown and the audience isn't going to love, like the audience is going to be surprised a lot. I don't know, whatever. He's talking about whatever. Uh, so who's going to SmackDown? The draft doesn't fucking matter. Yes, it does. What People are you crazy? go to the shows anyway. No, they don't. What are you crazy? Wasn't Sami Zayn on like SmackDown the other night? Well, so uh, get, no. Well, so the question is, which brand was he? He was drafted to Raw. He was able to go to both because there's only one set of tag titles, so the tag champs can go on both shows. Then fix it. <laughs> Stop having the two titles together. Make uh, new right. titles. You're right. That makes sense. And get rid of those stupid Spartan bullshit titles. Also, we'll just re- disregard the fact that The Miz, I think, is on Raw and LA Knight is on SmackDown. You know, and they clearly were going on each other's yeah. shows. You know what was easy? Yeah, and which title did they have? None of All them. All the titles. <laughs> they had no titles. Yeah. Judgment Day has everything. Yeah. He called. Listen. <laughs> Go ahead. I was <laughs> on SmackDown this week. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory were at the top of the saw that. Yeah, you yeah. two win cells. Yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. Um, it doesn't fucking matter. The draft doesn't fucking matter. Who's Somebody's on going one to show doesn't down. fucking matter. You think it's Cody Rhodes? He's going to go try to finish the story I against Roman Reigns? I don't think it Reigns? fucking matters. I think regardless, if he wants to fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, it's still, it still doesn't matter Grayson what fucking Waller. show he's on. <laughs> Something <sighs> Cody Rhodes and this audience have in common. They, neither one can finish a story. But don't. Anywho. That was my only WWE thing. I don't week. think it fucking matters. To it be doesn't. Honest. It doesn't fucking matter. Um, like most things, when you watch SmackDown or Raw, it doesn't fucking matter. Nope. L.A. Knight and Becky Lynch are the two reasons I watch. Yeah. 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 But yeah, um, it's it's just it's stupid. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't even forget what I was gonna say. I forgot what I was gonna say. I, think I tried. I tried googling. Um, I'm so excited now that the poster's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm maybe, really fucking excited. I'm sorry. Maybe maybe I should try YouTube instead. I was trying the last night. I was trying to Google Juice Robinson selling a chop that Dax Hardwood gave him. And I couldn't find it. Yeah, because he like chopped Dax like two or three times, and then Dax chopped him, and he like curled up and like fell straight back like he fucking got shot. I and can't. It was fucking. I do awesome. remember when you're talking about. I can't get over the fact that he looks like the Honeycombs guy. Interesting. The Honeycombs I monster. feel like he looks more like Macho Man Randy Savage. What do you mean? He totally looks like Randy Savage when his hair is like all crazy out and shit. Yeah. He totally does. Hold on, I'm looking up. He totally does. I don't know. I mean... Hold on, I gotta look up Juice Robinson. He totally looks like Macho Man when he's like all like crazy. I don't know. I don't know if that's right. Like, look at this shit. Doesn't that look like that looks like Macho? Like after a match with his hair all out. I mean, he's frizzy? intense like Macho Man. Yeah. I think his hair looks. I like can't macho. get over this. This is fucking ridiculous. I think his hair looks like Macho. That the him and the honeycomb <laughs> monster, <laughs> the honeycomb cereal guy. I just look it. up, look up honeycombs, honeycomb Did cereal just... guy and Juice Robinson for Did people you... listening. Oh, for people listening, just look it up because I'm not gonna put a picture. Yeah, look it up. It, it, what's what's the title of this episode? Is it gonna be called Honeycombs, Honeycombs guy and Juice Robinson brothers? Yes. Uh, I don't know. We could do that one. Oh no! This is the full fucking match. I don't want the full fucking just match. I just, I, just, I just want the part where he fucking whips him. What's uh? What's another thing that we mentioned today? 
Big meaty man sloppy meat's been it, it, that's too easy. It's too easy. What's the joke that we said tonight today? Um, um, as far as what we were talking about, at least everyone has an open challenge. There we go. Yep. Everyone has. Everyone an open has challenge. an open challenge. I speaking of which, you're watching the, the clip. Oh, oh my God! Are you kidding WWE, me? WWE, huh? WWE, fucking WWE bleeped or fucking phased it out because it was too graphic. Like most chair shots, like they'll just chair block shots, it yeah. out. He's gonna hit him again. Oh nope! They just cut right to. They, they did, cut, yeah. They cut you good. They cut you good. He he threw one. He threw. He did it once, and then they cut. Who would have thought that in the WWE? Oh, no. no, wait! I just went too far. Who would have thought in the WWE? That they would uh, be so violent in beating each other. You know? Anyway, I saw a clip yeah, earlier today destroyed. about. Um, he must have hit him in the head, that's why. That might be it. There, th- imagine uh, I saw a clip today about Just Incredible running into an ECW ring as Jazz is talking in the ring next to Joey, Joey, Joey Styles. Mm-hmm. He comes into the back of the ring behind her and just wails her in the back of the head with a kendo stick. And I'm like, ECW was a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's like talking about how her her TNA is her talent, and uh, she couldn't even get through the sentence. Just here, and just she gets whacked in the back of the head, and her manager gets hit too somehow. But interesting. Uh, I so I I got I got something else for you. Um, Impact Wrestling has uh Joe Hendry, <laughs> and um he has this thing where like backstage oh, if they say his name he appears, uh, like the devil. He appears. And um, there's apparently apparently there was some other guy who started like following him around and was doing his gimmick. I don't quite understand the full storyline because I haven't looked it up. But um, the guy like did the thing and he's he's like, "That's my thing. What are you doing?" <laughs> it's pretty funny. And uh, then they came out and I guess they were a tag team at the pay per view and they did like a uh, like a I don't know some uh, some Asian guy. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. And it, uh, their their tag name was Joya. Joya? Mm-hmm. J-O, and then I guess the first two letters of his name are, are Y-A. So they combined them. They were Joya. Okay. Um, so. I wanted to mention the fact that... Um, I wanted to mention the fact that uh, the Dudley Boys are returning to action as a tag team. What? Returning? That doesn't sound right. What do you mean? What? What? what, what like what? wrestling? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're actually wrestling. That's the, why I'm the thousand. That's why I don't... The thousand episode is supposed to be filming for Impact, and they will have the Dudley Boys together in a long time in seven years. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they will be. Um, they'll be together. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they're wrestling. I don't though. think they're wrestling. They might. Be. I think they're just gonna appear they together on the show. Wow, well, I. I you know that really you hard. You know who's gonna find that? You know who's gonna find out? You just passed Who? a Joya, by the way. I did. I'm trying to find when he pops up okay. uh, and steals his like gimmick thing backstage. What? Is there is is either of them retired? I don't. Could they still wrestle? Devon is retired. I don't think he plans to wrestle anymore. I'm gonna look it up while you're looking up that. Okay. Because I thought one month I probably went past it. Who's Trinity fought to? Uh, Trinity. Oh, from uh, do we know her? Is she? We is do she know her. She coming? no. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a bit. I'm sorry. She is very up and coming. I don't know where I should go with the bit. Who she's married to? See, there's. Jordan, yeah, I mean, it just it just keeps saying that they're just. They've gotten legend contracts from WWE, but it doesn't say if they're wrestling. On the th- on the one thousand show, I don't think they are. It just says they're returning. I'm gonna assume they that that they aren't. It just says they're reuniting. Which you're you're right. It could just be like they're not even gonna wrestle. They're just you know they're just gonna be hanging out, yeah. doing stuff. Which also, by the way, if that's the case, then why didn't Devon show up sooner? <laughs> why was it such a big deal? <laughs> like, yeah, it's seven years since they've been in a ring together. It's like okay. And why couldn't you do this before? Uh, Is that him right there? There's the Joya thing. Yori. Your, yeah, you, you, yeah. 
Yuya Amori. Mm-hmm. You're, 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 I don't know how to say it. I don't either. That was the one thing I was excited about, though, for Impact, is the Dudley Boys. Is Santino Morella still on that, or do you not watch Impact? I, I don't. Um, I just so happen to run across a... Joya. Uh, thing, yeah. I'll never find it. Oh, well. Anywho. But, you know, say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. The devil? I don't know what you're doing. That's his thing. Okay. They'll be like, don't say his name. And then he pops up in the song. Goes, say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. And then and then you just go back to the segment. I find it hilarious. I find it very entertaining. Speaking of uh, doing something special with your hands, uh, do we know when Scorpio Sky is coming back? Uh, not that I'm aware of. And also, what's his obsession with Thanos? Uh, or was he doing he that before comics. Thanos? No, he doesn't seem after like Thanos. the type who <laughs> likes comic way after books. Thanos. What do you mean, way after Thanos? He was doing the snap, like in oh, 2022. Before, oh, before uh, 19. Uh, let me look up when Infinity War came out. Yeah, that too. Because you know, that's not. He snapped during the comic book too. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so I was saying, you're right. I'm just a big dummy. No, you're not a dummy. I'm something. You're not a big dummy. Why the fuck can't I find just a backstage thing with you're him? You're not a dummy. Yeah. 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 Um, We're still recording. I don't Are know we? if you wanted to stop the recording. Uh, Are we but done? If you want, I can tell you the story about my me and my brother going, yeah, during uh trying to install my new uh air conditioner. Oh, do you want that story on the podcast? There were a bunch of bees in a piece of wood. So we had to put, so we had to put, I love this story because my brother had to put a mm-hmm. piece of wood behind, they have like, you hang it out the window and then like there's little step things that like come out the back and they like clip onto like the wall right here. Mm-hmm. So he was like, okay, we'll get a piece of wood and that way it'll stay steady. Excuse me. And that way the thing will stay, you know, stable. He gets a piece of wood from outside. He brings it downstairs, grabs a saw from downstairs, puts it on a bucket, and starts sawing. Halfway through, he goes, you hear buzzing? I'm like, I don't know, but you should get it upstairs if that's the case. He's like, no, hold on. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't just sit there and wait for something to happen. I was like, get it the fuck upstairs and get it outside. He's like, okay. So he puts it against the steps. Or like, almost cut. Almost cut. Just steps on it, cracks it in half. At least two carpenter, I'm guessing carpenter bees, came out. Total, by the end, was seven. Two John Carpenter bees? Two John Carpenter bees. When they come out, they don't buzz. They go... But yeah, so there was one point where we got six of them out, and then he went to go check in the hole to see if they were all gone. And one flew out, and he's like, oh shit, and he like fell. <laughs> it was hilarious. No one was hurt except for the one bee that died. Wait, I'm confused. Where were the bees? Were uh, the bees in the they piece were of wood? In the wood. Okay. And I guess they were just chilling. And so when my brother started sawing it, they were like, you know, annoyed by it. This or, is my home. Yeah. What are you doing, what boy? What are you doing in my Here's home? Boxy Brown. What are you doing, boy? You're cutting into my house. <laughs> Don't make me have to come out here and beat your ass. But yeah, one of them died because when my brother went to throw it up on the porch or the deck in the back, he threw it and then one came out of the hole as it was falling. So it like fell right on top of him. Oh no. So he died and he was just sitting there. He murdered But that the weird bitch. thing about it was there was a circle around it. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know if there's something that goes on with them where like they shoot out pheromone, pheromones that like request for help because a bunch of the other ones that were there just kind of came back. That like the ones that just like flew away, oh, they came they back do. and like was like, "Hey, what's going on over here?" But he was dead already. So. Yeah, I guess the question is that that is that for revenge or is that so they can mourn the dead? I guess just to help them because I don't think he real they they if they came back they didn't come back fast enough that by the time they came back he was already dead. I don't think they like maybe just to assist him or help him out. I don't right. know or to pay respects. Maybe yeah. Like he's like I've died here, 
shoot off pheromones so you guys can come visit me, you know, uh, on this pass on here. by when I die. Next to our home that's been broken in half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these fucking monsters. It was monsters. weird, too, because the piece of wood that my brother wanted to use had all the bees in it. Mm-hmm. Nothing came out of the other piece of wood that was broken in half. Like, the other part that was longer, mm-hmm. nothing came out of that. It's just the... They're, they were the just like, piece. this fucking monster destroyed our home yeah. and killed our brother. And my, my brother was like, he's like, I'm pretty sure when I was sawing through, I might have sawed through one of them. And it might have been why it pissed, they pissed, yeah, pissed off. Because he said there might be a dead one inside the bucket that he first starts sawing into. <laughs> I told him right away, I was like, get it upstairs. But then, like, the whole time he's, after, like, I, I went outside to go check on it and see if there's, like, I was, like, pushing it to see if it'll still, people were still, you know, more of them were coming out. He's up in the window because I'm in the back mm-hmm. the backyard. So he's up in the window. I'm like, you think there's more in there? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then he was doing it too. We were both doing LA Night the whole time. Because I've told him about it plenty of times. And then the funny part is, so he's doing it. And I was trying to set up my cubbies for my new system of where I'm putting my pops on the walls. One of the walls has Becky Lynch, my cardboard cut out of Becky Lynch there. Mm-hmm. I had to move her and I moved her into the bathroom looking out towards the hallway, which was a fucking mistake. She scared me three times <laughs> to the point where you it happened. And then I go like I was like, oh, shit, fuck. <laughs> and I was like, it fucking did it again. My brother's like, I don't know why you still have her like looking that way. You just turn her around. Every time I walked into the hallway, I would get scared by her because I just saw you just see out of the corner of your eyes someone standing there and not knowing it's a cardboard cutout. But then once I just jumped, I was like, fuck, it happened again. I did it again. He's like, I, said, I don't because I got him once mm-hmm. and then I did it three times, forgetting, forgetting how many times, how many every time that I she was in the hallway, because every time I'd walk out, my peripheral would just see someone in the bathroom just standing there. <laughs> taller than me because it has like a couple feet off the ground from her actual feet mm-hmm. it was a it was a fun day yesterday that's funny yeah so yeah um right. that was well, a fun time good times what do we have next grand slam to look forward to grand slam um not this upcoming wednesday the following wednesday we'll talk about grand slam i'm sure we'll talk about grand slam now that like once it comes yeah, I mean, they're already starting wow. to set up the matches. There'll be the world championship match uh, with the tournament winner. There'll be the women's championship match with the Fatal 4-Way winner. Uh, there will be Claudio and uh, Eddie Kingston. And it looks like both titles are on the line. That's what it seemed like from that promo. Um, also, that promo was hilarious and it like reminds me why I love Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston's great, uh, and he's um, not afraid to break the fourth wall. I love that. Yeah, and uh, I think those are the only matches set up for Grand Slam currently. Like they'll do something basic that everyone. Oh else... no, the other one is Sammy and Jericho. Yeah, they do like this the basic setup for something that no everyone knows is going to happen. And he goes, "You really think I'm dumb enough to do that thing that everyone knows is going to happen?" Like he'll be that guy to be like, "Come on, you know I I know this is a trap or something like." Mm-hmm. I'll do that shit all the time. The um, do you think they're gonna do Cargill versus Stat at Grand Slam? Maybe. I mean, I guess it depends on how quickly they wanna like jump into that feud. Not jump into it, but how quickly they wanna like go into the match of the feud. Like, it's definitely something that they could build for a couple weeks and have the match at Wrestle Dream instead of Arthur Ashe. Yeah, I don't know. I think you should. What do you? I mean, it would is, be it would be a shame if they were just like Jade Cargill's back. She attacked a champ, and then just all, and then they're just kind of like, "Yep, she's going to get a rematch next week." And you kind of just like basically blow off the feud like that quickly. I think yeah. I think no. Well, I think do that and then have her move on to something else like the Soraya. I think that'd Who? be cool. Jade or Jade? Okay. Jade, move on. I want her away from the TBS title because I'm like, I feel like that's all they've done with her and i'm like just do something it is different. All done with her do something different just have her you know tag with like a a famous celebrity like Shaq or something they've never done that before never anyway i think that's i think that we how long have we been going for an hour and a half jesus christ you know someone has to edit this right that's not me yeah just like keep going anyway that was uh, part of the deal we'll talk about grand slam tomorrow or tomorrow next week mm-hmm. um god willing of course and uh, yeah, 
Thanks for listening. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. Oh, wait, you say your thing. Oh, needful. Wait, what? Uh, it was the one Monday Night Raw when Triple H and Steve Austin were a team. And they oh, beat and they the beat shit out Lita. of Lita with the chairs. Like, oh, sorry about that. And uh, apparently it was seen as so offensive. That it the was kind of fucked up. Yeah, the, the level of brutality for a man against a woman. You know what they should have did? They almost got kicked off the air. Which nowadays Canada. they should do, which is have her get some shots in and then have her get beat up.